Well, that was weird, wasn't it? As a neutral fan, it's weird to see Real Madrid crumble once again on their own stadium for God knows what time in a row, especially in the Champions League. It was a bad sign when we found out that Sergio Ramos will not play against Shakhtar because they have an awful record to play against any team in the Champions League without Sergio. It was like 8 games, 7 losses. So, it was a bad sign straight away. But what the fuck did Real Madrid decided to do in the first half was out of this fucking planet. The fans was the worst enemy. Militao and Varane decided to do some incredible, outstanding moves that cost them few goals and basically cost them the game. But the funniest thing is, Schachter didn't have like 7 players from their original first team squad. Due to Covid or injuries or some other stuff, they were not available. It means that Real Madrid, the almighty once upon a time Madrid, crumbled to a team of people who just debut in the Champions League last season or making a debut right now due to some things that they were not able to control. And it baffles me that some people are actually trying to protect, trying to shield the president, the, the manager and those players who clearly do not deserve at least some part of them, to be in the squad. I don't know how to express my emotions when it comes to this, but we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Because right now, let's talk about the game. And it started pretty well for Real Madrid. In the first three minutes, they had an attack. Asensio tried to shoot, but was unlucky in his attempt because the goalkeeper saved it. And we clearly saw that... Due to, as I said, the fact that they didn't have like seven people in the squad, they didn't have their goalkeeper, they didn't have their uh, center backs, or at least one of them, they were scared. And Shakhtar was playing real time for the first five, seven minutes because they were afraid to concede. Because even though it's not Santiago Bernabeu, it's still Real Madrid Stadium. But here comes the heroes. The villains for one, the heroes for another's, the best duo of defenders, Varane and Militao. Oh my fucking god. 12 minutes in, and what the fuck are they already doing? I don't have a clue. I bet you don't have one too. Because for some unknown fucking reason, they decided to be in the middle of the pitch while Shakhtar went for attack. And what do you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation between Marlis and Courtois, and the whole defense need to rush and run as fast as they possibly can to somehow save the situation. Thankfully for them, they didn't have to do anything because Courtois saved their asses by saving the shot from Marlis, but that was only the first out of many attempts from Shakhtar to score a goal. And what do you know? 15 minutes later, after hard press from Shakhtar, they score. Militao, one of the best future defenders as I said, and there's no doubt that he has a potential, but in this particular case, fucking Felix from uh, Atletico Madrid tried to get the ball from Kimmich harder than he did while trying to get the ball from a debuting in the Champions League player from a Shakhtar. And what do you know, he runs away from Militao, gives a pass to Tata, and he scores! Then, 33rd minute, it was like 4-5 minutes after this, we see another goal from Shakhtar. Yeah, you can say it was unlucky that Varane scored it right in his own goal, but... It happened because he just completely dropped the game. He didn't even care, it seemed like. And then when he realized, ah, oh, shit, I need to do something, it was too late because he ran right to the ball. And he tries to stop himself, but it's too late. And he just whoop, whips it in right to his own goal. But the most embarrassing thing was yet to come because the third goal happened. 
again 10 minutes after the second one. Varane, once again, right in the middle of the fucking pitch. Marking absolutely no one. What the fuck is he doing here? He probably doesn't know himself. Shakhtar players had an opportunity to cross it over that Real Madrid player's hats, but they decided to wait. And what do you know? Oh my god. A clear fucking path to give an assist. To give the slight little pass so, so Solomon could actually score his fucking goal. And here, there is no argument that this was a coincidence. It was unlucky you know, structure of defense, it was constant mistakes by defense. So when the second goal came in, you could have said it was unlucky. Here you could have said, oh my god, you all are shit defenders. The most dangerous position in football, and you just leave it be. So the Shakhtar players could have a little combination, one, two, here comes the third goal. It was embarrassing. No team should play like this. It's, it's, I, I cannot even explain this. The only, like, reason why they play like this is the fact that due to COVID, due to all these things that Shakhtar went through without seven players, they underestimated them. They thought they're going to be so scared that they're just going to sit right to their own fucking half, right near the fucking goal, and do absolutely nothing. But no, that wasn't what happened, and you should not expect that team will just sit in their own half. You should expect that they will try and play, try and score, try and win. This was embarrassing. 45 minutes of pure embarrassment. Did they somewhat, you know, improve in the second half? Yes. But did they redeem themselves? In our defense, fuck no. Yes, we've seen Modric's beautiful goal. We've seen Vinicius steal a ball from midfielder of Shakhtar and score another one. But those two moments of the third goal was that was disallowed were the only moments from a second half. And I'm not even lying like, oh, I forgot every other attempt. No, that was basically it. They try and go for another cross and another cross and another cross, but nothing was very, was really dangerous apart from those three moments. And that speaks volumes because Shakhtar had two incredible attempts that should have been a ghost if not Courtois or, you know, just pure fucking luck at this point. It should have been like 5-2. If not more, because not only they had those two incredible moments, but they also had another and at least like two more okay chances that in theory could have become a goal. And I'm not saying that Shakhtar was like twice ahead of Real Madrid. No, I understand that they had their flaws, but Jesus Christ. The fact that they were lit in three by nil and they had at least like two more solid chances. It should be a writing on the wall for Zinedine Zidane that he needs either to change something, either to, you know, quit his job at Real Madrid. Something that is very much divided in Real Madrid fan base because one thing that he's a savior, he gave them three Champions Leagues in a row, he came back and he will do something similar to that or at least give Real Madrid a, you know, a breath of fresh air, something that they desperately need. But here comes another fan base that witnessed Zinedine Zidane's coaching abilities, that witnessed how he approaches to the, the team, how he forms this team, and they're saying that there will be little to none fresh, uh, fresh air, and I couldn't agree more. I know some very passionate Real Madrid fans, and they told me that Zinedine Zidane has like seven players that he adores. Obviously, one of them is Karim Benzema, someone you should probably realize by now, had some incredible moments in Real Madrid shirts. Two last seasons were really good 
uh, in Real Madrid. He came up after Cristiano Ronaldo left, and he became their most goal-scoring assistant from time to time player. The hero, the new leader of Real Madrid, but there is no denying that they needed someone else, and they didn't give anyone a shot. Diaz or Militao, or what I'm fucking saying, now Militao, Jovic, none of them got any chances. The only chances they got was the games where they fucked up or when the game was already done. Another one that blows my mind is Marcelo. He fucking rubbish when it comes to defending. And when it comes to attack, you know, he's not very much good at all anymore. Yeah, he can score. Yeah, he can dribble a little bit. He can showcase something good from time to time. But most of the time, it's just really painful to watch because you know that you have Mendy. You know that you had fucking Hakimi. But because you love Marcelo so much, you decided to say, fuck you guys. One you sold to Inter after great two seasons in Borussia Dortmund. Another one played a right back in this game. Why? Then you have players like Modric. And I love Modric because, first of all, I met him once when I was younger. Yeah, a little bit of a flex, but let's carry on. <laughs> and no matter how much I love this guy... He's out of his prime, and I respect the fact he wants to cut his, you know, uh, payroll. He wants to just stay in Real Madrid, and he wants to end his career there. And I can respect it, but he does not deserve to start. There are some better players in Real Madrid, or at least there should be better players who are in the prime of their careers or getting into their prime, because Modric is clearly out of this prime. And that's only three of some other players who are clearly do not deserve to start in this Real Madrid squad, but for some reason they are, and this reason is because they are friends with Zinedine Zidane. The other big problem for Real Madrid are the youngsters who clearly are not good enough for the squad, like Vinicius Jr. Yeah, he scores tonight, but for fuck's sake, when he scores, it should be a celebration day because he scores as rare as fucking me and I'm a shit goal scorer, trust me. And maybe you can say I'm going too harsh on Zinedine Zidane and the players, but no. Ask, you know, the Real Madrid fan who actually watched this team for years and he will tell you that he is sick and tired of how Real Madrid are playing. They are once so well known for their attack, now only cross and cross and cross and cross hoping for a header or for some lucky goal that they will be able to score. And that's why you hear a lot of shills actually shilling those players. Because well they scored and that's why they won, so I guess it's not all that bad. But when you look at the goals they scored, it's a lucky ghost, you know. Cross after cross after cross. Finally, Benzema scores. Cross after cross after cross. Here comes the Modric and he scores a beautiful goal. But there is no combination. There is no beauty in the way of how they play. And that burns even my heart. And I'm a neutral fan. Well, I'm a Liverpool supporter, as you already know. But even as a neutral, it burns my heart because I know that Real Madrid is wasted right now. They are in their own delusional little world where maybe they are still a great side, but when they are facing a capable team of going on in their own attack, they crumble. And we can clearly see it now third year in a row or maybe even fourth year in a row. And that's a shame because you always love to see another club go and be successful, but no way too successful because you always want your own club to be the best in the world. But you always want to have those competitors who will be able to present some incredible style of play 
that will score incredible goals game after game after game, or at least they will have some sort of philosophy that will carry them on and carry the legacy of their team. Right now, the only legacy that they have is three Champions League in a row, and that's an incredible achievement that maybe will never be done again, but that was years ago. And since then, Real Madrid went downhills. And it's really, really a shame to see this type of stuff happening right in front of your eyes. I'm not gonna lie to you. Well, that was it. Real Madrid versus Shakhtar 3-2. Thank you for listening and I guess here you soon.